Well, hello, I am Mel. Uh, really happy to have you join us today um, for our April community event. Uh, this is going to be a very special one. Uh, we're going to be talking about our brand new Wikihouse the Science Library. So I've got Alistair and Amber with me. I'm going to bring you guys uh, in a sec just to let you know we'll be here for about 40 minutes or so. Uh, we've got loads of time for, for questions at the end. So please do type them um, as you think of them and we'll deal with them towards the end of the session. Um, hello, Amber. Hello, Alistair. How are you doing? <laughs> um, hi, yeah. I'm going to just put some slides on the stage then and let you go for it, Alistair. Lovely. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Yeah, I'm Alistair. Um, uh, so, yeah, uh, Mel is, as, as, uh, as you've already got, she's already given away the ending today, which is cool. Uh, so, um, what we want to, what we're going to um, talk about, or show you, is a new page or new section, really, that we're adding to um, the Wikihouse website today. Um, it's one that's been quite a while coming. It's one that we've been wanting to do for a very long time, and it, um, it's really, it's, it's rooted in. A, in a, in a really deep, obvious problem. So um, I'm afraid before we jump to the actual thing itself, you're going to have to put up with me going on a bit of a meandering trip because uh, I just thought it'd be interesting to talk a bit about the reasons and the kind of thinking behind this page um, and the history of it because actually there's a kind of, there's some, there's some really kind of interesting history behind uh, this idea of and how we think about design libraries and the relationship to Wikihouse. And at the at the heart of it all is this concept of the pattern or the design pattern. And it's it's kind of seems like a slightly abstract concept until when you, if you're not familiar with it, but if it, once you are familiar with it, you realize, oh my God, it's, it's hugely important. Um, so what is a design pattern? A design pattern is a reusable solution to a common problem. So it's the idea being it's a, solu a solution which is shared and contains thousands of hours worth of kind of expertise and testing. So it's a kind of, uh, a, a, you can adapt it, but the core fundamentals of it are basically similar and same every time. So it might be, it might look slightly different. So for example, chair is a pattern. When I say the word chair, you will have a picture in your minds of a thing that you can sit on. Some chairs have arms, some chairs have wheelie roundy things instead of legs and so forth. But fundamentally the concept of a chair is a thing and therefore um, pattern and, and actually patterns are how design works it's how human language works they're really the basic unit of knowledge so they're, they're super super important and of course it doesn't take a sort of uh, a rocket scientist to, to spot that of course wikihouse is entirely patterns right that's the whole idea of wikihouse is the idea of let's actually let's develop shared reusable solutions to a common problem which is how do we make beautiful zero carbon housing now, the concept, the word, the, the, the uh, design pattern actually really comes or really shows up. It's, it was really kind of foregrounded or possibly even created, really, um, by Christopher Alexander in this incredibly famous book, probably, in my view, one of the most famous books um, about architecture and lots of things, actually, that's um, ever been published. This was published in the 70s, I think. Um, and in this book, it contains, it's like a little, uh, uh, it is a library actually of, of patterns that you can use to make human centered places. Um, if you haven't read it, if you don't have a copy, definitely recommend reading it because it's both interesting in itself for the concept of patterns, but also in itself, the patterns are also really interesting and, and really good. Um, what's really interesting is that this book, it came out in the sort of 70s and architects hated it. It was really roundly rejected by architects. They really didn't like the idea. So what Chris Alexander had done is actually he'd gone out studying particularly vernacular architecture. So a lot of architecture that's created without architects. And by studying it, he'd come up with this concept of a language, the way that different solutions map and mesh together to create a language. And architects didn't like this at all. Um, but weirdly, it was hugely influential um, in the world of digital technology. And in fact, it, it formed the basis of lots of the, sort of the coding for, uh, languages and frameworks that uh, many of us use every day. And it's really become quite, quite kind of normal. So this is um, gov.uk. If you actually go on, you can search for this on, online. Uh, the Government Digital Service, GDS, they actually publish a series of open source patterns, which are the basic kind of 
components that they can use to make really good public websites. So if you think about it, we all use patterns all the time. Drop down menu is a pattern that we all recognize really, you know, that we use almost every day without even thinking about it. Um, so yeah, like uh, it feel we one of the things we always quite like about doing this work is it feels a little bit like we're taking this concept and borrowing it back from the digital domain back into um, the built environment. Um, but the reality is um, that whether architects liked it or not, um, the built environment is all patterns, uh, to borrow a kind of phrase, it's patterns all the way down. So we can think of its patterns within patterns within patterns. So we can think of different scales of pattern. You have like settlement patterns like town or city all the way down to sort of the concept of a street. So neighborhood patterns all the way down to individual material um, material patterns. Um, and it's kind of interesting in it that actually architects were like, oh, no, we don't like the idea that we do patterns. Uh, but actually, they do all the time. They acknowledged it. So it's really funny that architects are like, oh, yeah, they really like Detail Magazine. Um, so it, it, in a sense, what, what was kind of going on was um, uh, architects don't mind. They didn't mind the idea of, of there being patterns for the stuff that they use, like the details, but they didn't like the idea that what they produced was also very pattern based. I think I'd say I, I'm generally this is a very kind of old fashioned view of architects. And I think now architecture is really waking up and recognizing that actually, if we want to solve really big challenges like sustainability, um, really leaning into patterns and understanding how they work is, is a superpower. Um, so I think it's very much a kind of uh, a, a, an old fashioned way of thinking about architecture that, that is less and less the case really. Um, nonetheless, what was really interesting is that in different spaces, it really was leaned into. So particularly in the States, so these are some of the, um, one of the kind of uh, probably quite influential American architects of the 19th century was Andrew Jackson Downing. And he did these, published all these books that were pattern books. Actually, it was not the first. There was a whole series of evolution of, of, of architectural pattern books. You could even argue that Vitruvius's book was a pattern book. But this was really explicitly like these books which would give you these house plans and, you know, they were really used, right? And that evolved into, I love this, this is an amazing piece of history. That evolved into, um, into the early, into the sort of 1900s, um, the fact that Sears catalogue used to do houses um, so you could you could mail order a house um, through the Sears catalog, and they ha would have a, literally a catalog of house types um, across the states. Um, sorry, I mean you know they would they would deliver to anywhere across the states, and so you could essentially mail in. And for the hilarious figure of two thousand dollars, what they would send you all the materials that you then needed, and then you could um, engage your own laborers um, uh, to build the thing. Um, uh, or I think they also provided, you know, they also connect connect you with 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 construction companies, um, and also they provided a standardized design. But then they could also they also would modify it for you if you wanted to as well. So um, you you could hire them to do that, which is kind of very familiar to us. So it's this is kind of a fascinating piece of history. Um, and uh, hundreds and I mean, many, many, like thousands of houses were made in this way. I don't know exactly how many, but lots of houses were built in across across America in this way. I actually hadn't also fully appreciated that these these patterns were somewhat open source as well, um, in the sense that they they gave the actual plans out quite freely. Uh, but they wanted you to um, uh, order the materials from them. And then more, more lately, I think there have been lots of really interesting projects. So just in the few years before WikiHouse was set up, for example, one of them was Architecture for Humanity did, um, uh, and Cameron Sinclair did a whole thing about um, uh, open sourcing architecture and, and how can we have, have these open shared patterns for solving common um, design problems. The, the bit that... Um, like when we first were working on WikiHouse, the bit we really zeroed in on was saying, well, actually, what we've really got to solve is this bit, the construction patterns. We think that's the really, because what we've got to do is it's not, it's only of limited use just publishing some plans because it doesn't make it fundamentally that much easier to actually build that building. So the opportunity that really we saw that Wiki, that was the kind of genesis for WikiHouse was saying, hey, hold on a minute. Um, there's a technological opportunity here 
to develop a series of, of construction patterns that can fundamentally make it much, much easier to build um, almost any house um, that you want. So the kind of the the kind of missing kind of uh, magic of of open source in in the in the world of architecture wasn't just publishing plans online, but the idea that once digital fabrication came into the mix, you could do this amazing thing where you could publish a file, this 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 just a bundle of code that. Uh, contain thousands of hours worth of knowledge and testing and iteration. And you could just take that piece of code, combine, put it into a machine, combine it with a standard, uh, you know, a standard widely available uh, material, and you could manufacture something. And so it's, it's basically, it's like a kind of uh, vernacular on, on, on um, vernac vernacular on speed, <laughs> sometimes I describe it. Like the idea that, um, it's taking this idea of shared vernacular, common knowledge, which has been tested by many, many people, and actually digitizing it, which is really just replicating what taking or everything that had already transformed open source software and saying, hold on a minute, once we bring digital fabrication into the mix, we can do the same for hardware. So it's a way, it was the idea that we can share patterns as code, basically. And to begin with, um, Really, so the early WikiHouse house building systems like Ren, we really kind of struggled to work this out because um, really the, the it was like a whole house. So people would contact us all the time saying, oh, look, I really want the files for this house, that house type, but, but I want changes that will actually is quite a lot of work. So it wasn't quite working. And so eventually what we arrived at, as um, you probably know, is WikiHouse Skylark. And the, the thing that why Skylark really helps us here is that because it it does everything at the scale of these sorts of Lego blocks, it means that effectively we can um, then have almost a degree of separation between house patterns and blocks. So that the moment you have this standardized system of, of of reusable blocks, you can then configure those in loads and loads of different ways. But it also means that. Um, we can version the product, right? So we can version the block. So uh, we, you know, we're, we're kind of quite often looking at little, use, taking the feedback, taking what people are finding in the community, iterating the design of of the Skylark system. But actually, um, if we'd already had a complete bunch, a complete house set of house files, we'd have to completely up, down, update the entire house file. Whereas this way, actually, you can make house patterns that will work really, and you can keep versioning both almost independently of each other, but nonetheless, they're designed to work together. So we built this library of uh, Skylark blocks, which is cool. Um, but now we can begin to say and have a new way of understanding the relationship between a construction system pattern like WikiHouse Skylark and the house pattern um, or the different types of house layouts that you could then create. Um, uh, using that so there's this happy this lovely happy relationship where we can expand the wiki house library from just the construction blocks so the construction patterns to also including space patterns and building patterns so why why would we want to do this um and there's really two you know two answers one is to make it easier right is that because if we can take thousands of hours worth of knowledge take solutions that have been tested and used before and have really been sweated and put them up there up front instead of every, everybody having to reinvent the wheel every time, that's going to always for the better, right? The basic mission of WikiHouse is to make it simpler for everybody to make beautiful zero carbon buildings. So one of the ways we can make it simpler is by sharing solutions instead of making everybody come up with solutions themselves every single time. Now, that doesn't mean you can't come up with new solutions and it doesn't mean you can't adapt them. So the the the, the designs library that we're going to show is is anything but exhaustive. It's not even it's not even a, a, it's not even a tiniest drop in the ocean of, of what you can do with WikiHouse. Um, but it seems like still a useful so somebody might look at those and go, hey, that's useful. That's going to save me time. So, for example, one of uh, our favorite types of user of WikiHouse are community organizations. So community land trusts, co-housing groups who are building housing. One of the things that they have all the time is a real struggle where they're like, 
that we don't have money up front to hire, uh, to do all that work of like hiring an architect and hiring a QS to come up with some initial designs. Because they, but then equally, because they don't know how much what what their scheme could look like or how much it's going to cost, they can't then get the funding. <laughs> so they're they're sort of caught in this chicken and egg. So the ability to say, hey, here's a patent. What if we did something like this, um, and it would, might cost something roughly like that, and it's it's like a start point to that you can you can jump skip straight to level four of, of 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 a project with maybe even if actually later you you then you then change it a bit so making it easier is a good thing the other thing is this is and i'm basically going to put this in terms of one of our um, advisory group said rather brilliantly recently said look you've got this fantastic product loads of people have put all this work in making this fantastic building system that is superb it's solving a really really important problem but what does what does it look like right and of course there's no one answer to what wiki house looks like it can look to look like all kinds of things but it's a really valid point it's a really valid criticism right which is that when we buy lego we usually you can buy those yellow tubs but usually you don't buy lego like this you don't just buy a bunch of bricks and, and go very often when you buy lego you'll buy it in something like this now, yeah, sure. You, might, as I say, you might not build the house, build exactly that kit. You might make, you might vary it a little bit. But we're like, hey, okay, let's try this out. So that was a really long way of saying that what we're doing um, today is trying this out. So we're putting this new library on the section. So if you go to the WikiHouse website, um, you can get the blocks library still as it is today, but we're also going to have this additional new library um, where you can go and view patterns, which are designs, standard common designs um, that can be built um, using WikiHouse Skylark. Now, at the moment, it only has three, first, it only has three patterns in it. We'll be hopefully continually adding more and really interested in other people's suggestions and, and contributions for other ones that we could add in future. But we've put three starters for 10 in there. And this is where I uh, hand over to uh, Amber um, to talk about them. Thank you, Alistair. That was really great as a, as a kind of run through of the logic behind why we've got to the point where we're up to now creating these patterns, as you say. So uh, the idea is to kind of um, provide inspiration, show those WikiHouse blocks, you know, coming together as projects so that people can hopefully understand the kind of quality of spaces that can be created, um, but also to kind of, you know, connect people with uh, cutting files and, and packs of information that allow um, allow you to, to create those spaces yourselves um, as, as wanted and as needed. So I'm just going to share my screen. One second, so sorry. Okay, here we go. So the, the kind of main point of conversation today is the Garden Studio. That's our, our show piece that we're, we're um, uh, updating everybody on today with this uh, presentation. So the idea is for a, a garden room um, that is ancillary to your main uh, home and uh, is of a scale that if you wanted to build this yourself you hopefully would be able to do that if you have the mindset for that um, but also you have different delivery options if you're looking for more like professional supported um, uh, somebody to come into your um, your uh, home and, and do this for you so we can talk a little bit more about that uh, in a moment um, the, the scale of the space, just a little bit on this. So we've designed it to fit within permitted development in the UK. Um, so that would mean that you would be beneath the requirements for planning permission as long as you adhere to the requirements for that. So uh, if in doubt, you can talk to your local planning authority. You could also consult um, a local designer, perhaps, or a local builder, anybody with that knowledge and experience of working within permitted development. But the scale and size and proportions of the space itself are within the requirements for that. So that's good to know, hopefully. So um, the space, we imagine this would be really useful as a workspace. It could be an artist studio, obviously a garden room just to enjoy, uh, you know, being in your, in your garden space as you like. 
Uh, it's super versatile, I think, this scale. It's surprisingly uh, spacious and roomy as well. Um, the design itself, you can see this lovely visual. Um, that we've got these wonderful you know, big opening uh, doors to the one side, a lovely little picture, slim uh, uh, portrait window to one side here and lots of shelving. Just a really practical, versatile space. Um, so yeah, so this is essentially the um, the overall uh, design here of the garden studio. So you've got your floor plan here on the left. The kind of basic shell would provide you with space for this kind of garden room studio area, perhaps some storage space. Um, and at the moment, we're looking at a really lovely open uh, vertical timber screen cladding, a bit of an outdoor deck there as well, which we can look at in a bit more detail later on. So alongside this kind of concept design that you can see through these visuals, the plans, um, elevations, etc., what you're going to get with this particular design is um, a ready-made set of cutting files um, that you'll be able to uh, access through our manufacturer network, which I'll talk about later on as well. We've also gone through the process here of creating a bill of materials. So the idea being, uh, you can see everything that would be required in delivering this particular project. Um, we've suggested some product names here, quantities, some uh, price estimates there. The idea being whether it's you or your professional that's helping you to deliver this, um, you'd be able to use this essentially as a material order list, um, refresh those costs based on the quotes that you receive uh, and, and manage that yourself um, really nicely and, and supported through this, uh, this template basically. So let's have a little look at what the delivery side of this garden studio looks like. So we've designed it to work with screw pile foundations, which is a really lovely light touch way of, uh, of securing your uh, structure into the ground. So the sort of first step once you've so self or professionally installed those screw piles is to have your sole plate ring beam, which sits on top of all of the, those, uh, those ground piles there. And then here we're looking at our WikiHouse um, floor blocks. So we have all of these as part of the pack that you will get from your WikiHouse manufacturer. Um, so yeah, it's uh, hopefully nice and straightforward. These will come fully insulated as well um, and ready for you or your, uh, or your support to install on site. And here are the block wall modules coming into place. Um, it's lovely, generous, great big opening here on this, uh, this facing side. And as I mentioned, the, uh, the kind of slim picture window to the end there. So, it's worth saying, by the way, sorry to interrupt, time, but it's worth please. saying that when, as well as obviously there could be versions of this that are smaller or large or whatever. But of course, the nice thing about WikiHouse Skylark is you could put the openings any way around. So literally the same set of blocks, you could put the windows really, um, or the doors anywhere really. That's absolutely right, Alistair, and I, I do really love that point. So all of the wall blocks that you can see here are standardised. So if, for example, you didn't want this particular opening on this wall uh, on the end here, you wanted to move it around to the front or to the other side, you're totally free to do that. And as Alistair kind of used the Lego example there, it really is you know that straightforward. You're able to, to mix and match those wall blocks um, to move those openings where you'd like them. Um, and yeah, so we've got a lovely little uh, skylight here on the top there. So that's our roof block installed. Then we are all timber connections using the WikiHouse system. So we have our bow tie connectors here. So once you've got all of your uh, blocks in place, you'll be intermittently tapping these in um, to connect those blocks together, basically. Uh, at that point, once you've got all of your bow ties in, you have a full insulated structural timber frame there, um, as I say, using the WikiHouse system. We're then moving on to wrapping and weatherproofing that frame um, using either the specification uh, suggestions we have in our uh, bill of materials or um, a, an alternative that you, you've decided to go with. Um, my suggestion really for, for these kind of follow-on stages is to get in touch with the manufacturer. Um, certain manufacturers have really helpful installation uh, advice, videos, guidance, step-by-step uh, -step instructions. So make sure that you kind of familiarize yourself with those if you're doing a self-build project. If you're using a, a local installer, um, uh, make sure that they have that, you know, good experience, um, but they should be able to install as per those instructions themselves as well.
So we've got our uh, windows uh, at this point now fitting into that uh, frame. The nice thing about a WikiHouse modular um, frame is that those opening structural opening sizes are preset in the design and essentially we're looking at such minute levels of um of uh of variance that what you have in your drawing is what you're going to have on site you're able therefore to um put your uh, window door um order um forms into those um uh, you know, those those product manufacturers nice and early, get those orders in nice and early, secure those prices. And then once um, once your frame's up and ready, you've got you've got those, um, you know, those elements to kind of fit and secure into place. So it's a really nice, straightforward assembly process. So we're looking at starting to secure our cladding here. So we've got um, suggested two layers of battens. First is the vertical battens, which are going this way and then our horizontal buttons which go over the top which allows us to have this really lovely open vertical rain screen timber cladding which is really beautiful and it's worth saying like all wiki houses right you can use any cladding any rain screen cladding that you want right so um uh and one of the things is that if um you're building this say at the bottom of your garden and it's actually the back is just facing a a wall or a fence or something and no one not even your neighbors can see it you might decide to put in like a much simpler cheaper like onduline cladding or something onto the back face um, and just have nice wood on the front but basically it's up to you you can like everything you can cloud it with anything right Amber. absolutely right you have your um your wiki house frame there which provides uh, enough sort of uh, structural substrate to fix into your cladding um, uh, as you like, really. So it's it's up to you. You have that freedom and flexibility um, to, to swap that out. So then we have our decking that's coming over the top here, which allows us to have this nice connection uh, from the outside into the inside of that garden room space. And this, by the way, is a theme. So I would want to but that you'll see a lot is that in general, even on the larger patterns and larger wiki art designs, we try more and more to push towards um, screw pile foundations, so to avoid concrete because the, the concrete produces a lot of carbon emissions and whereas screw pile foundations can be taken out at the end of the building's life and reused or recycled. One of the things that means, of course, is you've got this floating floor. So a lot, what, one of the challenges of these design patterns is finding really nice ways to deal with that level change. And uh, you can kind of spot that in various different designs. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, at this point we're seeing our kind of finished frame here. Um, we've suggested a, a green roof over the top um, which with our beautiful skylight here and yeah all dressed and already ready for for enjoying um, and just to kind of cut this uh, roof section off and have a little look inside as Alistair says because we're looking at a modular frame system you know within the the um, uh, constraints of local planning local regulation you can adapt these designs um, to suit your own personal requirements so in this example we're looking at it as more of a kind of office space with this storage area to the rear um, and the next example for you know we're looking at more of a substantial build here with a toilet and sink uh, also integrated into the space um, so I'm just going to pause here for a second and I'm going to just have a little look at this now in 3D, just to really bring home how this design is looking. So everything I've just described as we just spin around, really lovely, straightforward space, rectilinear, flat roof, green roof, beautiful big glazed opening doors here. And I'm just going to have a little look on the inside. And hopefully the design speaks for itself in terms of the kind of quality of space that we're looking at creating here using the WikiHouse system. And again, the thing with the inside is that like uh, Skylark doesn't care, right? So you can you can you can use a whole variety of linings. So depending on your budget and depending on your kind of taste. So what we've shown in some of these is this lovely kind of wood wall, which is really nice as an acoustic dampening effect as well. And again, it's a bio based material, which is great. Um, but you could use um, plywood, you could use plasterboard, anything goes. 
That's so true. And the bill of materials in that way is really helpful as a kind of shopping list. You've got some material quantities in there and you have the freedom and flexibility to to swap those out for alternatives as you as you like. Really. Um, so that's probably enough for now, I think, on, on that. So just to kind of move on a little bit now from the garden studio, um, two of the other designs that we have in development at the moment, the first being the micro house. So of course, what we're looking at here is expanding now into an actual uh, habitable space, uh, something that could be a good starter home or a home for um, one to two people. Um, beautiful pitched roof, um, apex design here. We do really love our timber cladding, but as Alistair says, you've got the freedom to obviously change these materials out as you like. And the idea here is to give inspiration for a build of this scale. So if this is something that's more in tune with the kind of scale of build that you'd be looking for, um, you can get in touch and we can have a conversation around uh, some of the um, some of the points that would need to be raised for, for delivering this kind of scale of scheme. But yeah, so here we're looking at the kind of floor plan as we've designed it. Really nice. You've got this bed space, bathroom in the center, really straightforward, open living dining area, super efficient layout, um, but still really kind of like luxurious and spacious feeling. And as always, we love a, a mezzanine space to kind of maximize floor area there. So that could potentially be used as secondary sleeping as when needed or storage um, as you like. So it's, it's just a bit more of the kind of... It's worth uh, saying on this, one of the things that that we've done this for is that there's various different types of demand that we've sort of seen for for, for these for these kind of things. Um, so you could build this obviously as a building on on screw foundations or whatever normal foundations, but we've shown it here on a trailer because that's obviously quite a common trailer. If just worth noting that um, if you're doing on the trailer, then you're building something that fits the what's called the Park Homes regulations in the UK, um, and that has rather funny rules. So one of the funny rules it has, it has it sets a maximum internal ceiling height, which is super weird. Um, but it would mean that you'd have to adapt the design slightly to um, to, uh, to to deal with that. Absolutely, yeah. So the the fact that it's movable on a trailer means that uh, in some instances you're able to to have this in place um, for a certain number of years without having to apply for planning permission. Um, but as Alistair says, the kind of scale that we're looking at here would also be perfectly suitable as a permanent build, um, as a home or a, um, you know, a rentable accommodation or whatever you know is needed um, for you. Um, so yeah, really lovely. And this design is using um, standard Wikihouse blocks um, predominant piece. It's just nice to see how those um, how those pieces are coming together. So the next final design type pattern to talk about today is um, a design that I kind of visualise for um, higher density areas, more in tune with um, like suburban or inner city examples of, of areas, but could also of course be used. Um, uh, in, in, where there's more space. Um, but we're just trying to sort of really push and test how WikiHouse could be used in different contexts and different environments, depending, as Alistair says, on demand. Um, so uh, in this example, this is um, a two and a half bedroom home with another really lovely, uh, generous ground floor uh, open space, um, living, kitchen, dining. So here we can see this being used as a terrace. And again, as Alistair uh, kindly reminded me, we're free to clad these material, uh, these uh, wiki house frames, sorry, with whichever materials, um, you know, planning permits and, and our material palette uh, uh, desires. So that's a, a really nice example there. We can see the same design being used, but creating really different effects. Um, proportionally, we're looking at openings that are, you know, taller, bringing in more light, creating a higher. Um, scale of space, um, higher head height within there. So it feels generous, even though the actual floor plan itself is, is nicely efficient. Um, and then on the front here, you can see the kind of entrance design, straightforward, but a really clear sense of, of um, that kind of street facing elevation. When you look carefully here, you can see the trick that um, uh, you, you'd have to pull in terms of the relationship with the ground level. So this is a um, what's actually, because you've got this thing where the, the buildings are being built off the ground. So in this case example, it's using a trick which um, 
zero uh, zero actually used with the South Yorkshire housing ones, which is where you basically build a kind of planter in front, and that disguises the fact that you've actually got a kind of ramp up to the up, up to the front door level, so you can achieve that kind of level access thing. So, yeah, really nice, really nice concealing the kind of step from ground to interior there, which is great. Um, and as Alistair says, it, it, it's a, we're able to create that kind of level access threshold by by using the internal circulation. Um, to do so, uh, or external circulation. So, looking at the those floor plans as we as we kind of currently have them. Um, so, in this example, uh, we're looking at um, just under five and a half meters by just under um, ten and a half meters in length. Um, so, these are using, as I say, the WikiHouse block modules. We're using that kind of WikiHouse um, grid to create these spaces. Um, so. It's all nice and logical there and efficient in material use and straightforward in frame assembly as well. Um, so yeah, really nice um, contemporary two-story example. And then looking at expanding that, adding a bit more breathing space um, as needed, an alternative ground floor layout here. And again, the uh, bed spaces for five people are suggested. Um, so just, just another example really of how you might see WikiHouse in, uh, as I say, in different contexts. The trick, by the way, that this house I really like about this is that is the reason it's called the split house is because you can see the levels are changing. And the reason for that is basically trying to make what's a really compact house, as, they, as you say, Amber, designed for kind of somewhat semi-urban environments, um, nonetheless feel really big. And the trick is high ceilings. But also by, by staggering them like that, it means that you can do the high ceiling and the stair return. So actually the, the amount of house that's taken up by stairs and corridors is really 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 small so it's sort of even though it's quite a small house it, it should feel feel it should feel really generous absolutely and it reminds me of for example like scottish tenements scottish tenements are a, a, a pattern or a type of their own um and within those you could have you know a small floor plan but just having that extra ceiling height from that kind of georgian area architecture the extra um you know high openings within that means that even in a high dense density urban environment your home always feels super light and spacious and i love the way that we're kind of bringing these um traditional architectural elements into um, modern architecture here using the wiki house system um as, as alistair says it, it feels spacious despite being really efficient in floor area um so yeah so this is just looking at that kind of broken down into into sections here from ground floor as we see the open plan you know sociable space and then upstairs is our kind of private sleeping areas um you know, it's fitting a really surprising number of bathrooms into this arrangement as well we've got an ensuite to the master there really lovely family bathroom there as well at first floor um so yeah so the last thing just to mention is you know these examples that you're seeing here um are our own attempts at, at showing you you know how far you can push the wikihouse system but as alice says it's just a drop of the ocean um we've already had a, an incredible variety of projects delivered using our modular frame to date and, uh, and we see no limits in some senses of of where we can take it in the future if um, if you're looking at these ideas and it feels along the lines of something you're looking to create but perhaps not quite capturing it, um, please do feel free to get in touch. We have our own WikiHouse uh, professional providers network from the manufacturer side but also from the design side. We have some incredible architects who are experienced uh, designing with the WikiHouse system. We'd be really happy to have a conversation with you about um, fitting your, your personal and bespoke uh, design requirements as needed. But um, but we really feel that these these uh, first three types are giving a, a, you know a really great uh, acceleration to delivering some um, uh, common design uh, briefs that we get very often here and hopefully will allow you to get your hands on something and get building um, uh, in a relatively streamlined way. Um, so uh, yeah, so that's that's probably enough from me. Um, Alistair, a little bit on the website and where to find these designs. Yeah, so I was about to say that, uh, well, they are. So we can now, you can go to wikihouse.cc forward slash designs. Actually, I've just noticed there's a bit of an issue with the links. So we'll sort that out in the next uh, next uh, half hour or so and work out what's going on with those. Uh, with those. Um, but 
um, yeah, basically, if you go to wikihouse.cc designs, um, you'll be able to see those these patterns. And there's 3D models, basic 3D models. So they, they're kind of, usually, in most cases, they're kind of low poly 3D models. Um, the idea being that they're using uh, blocks, the detailed models, if you like, come from the blocks in the library. So this is what I talked about earlier in terms of a bit of separation and between uh, uh, between the two. The exception to that is the um, Garden Studio um, one, as we say, because we basically just it's it's quite custom to fit within the permitted development um, rules, and we just want people to just take that and go. Um, that does have its own set of cutting files, which you can download right there, as without even going to the blocks library. Um, some of the patterns may use um, custom blocks from time to time that, that don't exist yet, and obviously we'll we'll add those to the library um, uh, um, over, you know, as an, as an, as and when really. And just to say a little bit more on that, um, the library is obviously there. It's evolving to to fit as many requirements as possible to allow um, both professionals and clients and, and homeowners to to access the, that kit of parts. But we do also offer um, bespoke model modelling um, facilities here, which is part of what I'm doing um, on the kind of project side. So um, so that's where the kind of the there's so much variation and flexibility in what we can create, but as Alistair says, predominantly we're looking at in the, the second two options, um, the standard uh, library of parts with a couple of uh, extra uh, design flare pieces in there. So, um, so that's great. I think we've captured, hopefully, uh, the gist of everything. <laughs> if anyone has any questions, feel free to fire them in. Um, or if uh, if these crop up later on, then uh, you can also reach us through our social media channels. Um, Mel, feel free to summarize. Yes, I'm coming here with questions. Uh, yes, yeah, so we've got a few people across different platforms. Uh, so could one of you really quickly summarize what the library of the signs is? Oh, that's a good that's a good challenge. Uh, other than say it's a library. so basically it is a library of house designs that can be made using WikiHouse. Okay, um, and what is the difference between that and the blocks library? So the blocks, the blocks library, say, is like it's your individual blocks, like you know, it's your Lego pieces, basically. And in what we're doing with um, the house things is then saying actually put those all together. And of course, it's not just a configuration of blocks because what we're also doing underneath each pattern is fundamentally a WikiHouse chassis, right? And that's made of the WikiHouse blocks. But what we're also doing is saying, well, you're not going to live in just a bunch of uh, uh, of WikiHouse blocks. You also need windows and roofing, it's all that kind of stuff. Now, this is one of the things is that obviously WikiHouse is an open network. It it's not a single company, right? It's not like oh right, we're going to sell you that whole entire kit. But what we can do is from that, based on that pattern, is demonstrate what that could look like, and then in that bit of materials that Clayton has put loads and loads of time um, into sweating those, and we can keep doing that. Is that you can download that spreadsheet which has Here's the list of the, the materials and, and quantities that we think you'll need to build this house and some example specifications. Again, yeah, they're just examples. You can totally switch them out or find other ones, whatever, but it's more helpful to have an example than nothing at all. And some example prices so you can get a sense of um, uh, what that's, you know, what, what that might cost. Um, and uh, yeah. So, but obviously, the the, the core element it, that will be in there is your WikiHouse blocks, and those WikiHouse blocks you can go and uh, find a WikiHouse manufacturer and get them to manufacture the blocks, and then you can order all the other pieces that you need for yourself. Yeah, um, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Um, and um, at the minute, so this is this is the this is where they're going to live. WikiHouse.cc forward slash designs. So we are launching three today, and what's the plan for uh, for other patterns or other designs? Yeah, very, that's a yeah, very good question. So what we're hoping to do is just keep trickling new ones on, particularly as we're sort of because of course you could do anything, right? You could do all sorts of things, but we're particularly interested in saying, well, what are common needs or common opportunities and and and, and really good designs that are emerging that are you know perhaps people have done variants of um, or developed, and actually we can add those on. And we've actually put a link, just a little link to the feedback thing at the bottom of the patterns of, of, of the designs library, right? So that if you have ideas, and we can't promise that we're going to add them, but if you have ideas, say, hey, I think it'd be really cool to have a pattern for this kind of case um, at some point, then you know we'll definitely think about uh, um, 
prioritizing that but hopefully we'll just slowly keep sort of adding adding more um uh, adding more designs from time to time really yeah that's great um, and amber um can you tell us a little bit more about the garden studio why is it slightly different from the other two um yeah so the the idea of the garden studio is to um create a space that's of a scale that you would be able to get your hands on it and get it built um you know in, in a simpler and more straightforward way than looking at some of the larger scale schemes so it's been designed to work within permitted development um design um, limitations i mentioned at the start there that um there are some sort of factors within permitted development that you might need to just uh, bear in mind um, in terms of the kind of positioning and location of your um of your studio space but also the sort of sc uh, scale and size of your home so it's worth just bearing in mind uh, some of those factors do a little bit of research make sure you're happy or if you're not sure then talk to your local planning team um uh who will be able to to advise but yeah the idea being that um that it's it's a really nice um scale of space small scale of space but super versatile in, in size it could be used as i said as a, a workshop artist studio office home office or just a beautiful space to enjoy your garden also we just kind of wanted to make something that people can make now because we right it's so hard like you know obviously uh wiki houses primarily you know, people are using it for all sorts of things it's called wiki house but obviously you think houses obviously there's lots of increasing use for commercial you know workspaces and classrooms and all sorts right but um you know all of those projects are big deal projects that take a long time because you've got to navigate you know you know navigate the the, the planning process so we liked the idea of including a pattern that is that you don't have you know should you should and i don't want to say that you definitely don't so check but you, in most cases you you should be able to build it without planning permission without building without a building regulations approval again check it um but um and you can just crack on with it and it, it you know it meets it meets someone's needs now and, and that, you know that's cool so it's sort of like the nice to have a pattern in the designs library that's sort of the almost the lowest threshold um uh if you, if you yeah it's, it's worth bearing in mind as well we're kind of coming up to the end of april i myself can't think of any better way of spending the summer than doing a home build in my garden so <laughs> i feel we're launching these at just the right time really for people to have a think about it and uh, do their research and, and have a bit of a summer build experience yeah so that was going to be the next question actually um so does that mean that once this um url is live i can go to that uh, garden to your page and download everything do it myself the plan as i understand it alistair feel free to update me is um that you'll be able to get your hands on the the, the design the scheme you'll be able to see it understand it um uh and then have a conversation with the wiki house manufacturer so at the moment we have manufacturers in the uk latvia the us we're in the process of expanding into australia um, and across the european continent at the moment so um, we want to make sure that you have a wiki house manufacturer there to support that um, frame uh, construction side to give you that kit of parts to make sure that you, you get the quality that you expect um, so from the kind of the machining part um, uh, that's my understanding of the process um, and the bill of materials is there as I said as your kind of shopping list for everything else that you would need to purchase so you will have that for yourself directly um, to to start to make those order order um, requests yeah and uh, um, yeah or, or I just saw Amber, Am, Amber's comment yeah, obviously you can manufacture it yourself so all the cutting files will also be there um, the one thing that isn't there yet is a set of assembly manuals um so at some point we'd like to add those to the garden studio as well because uh, um kind of we imagine quite a few people will want to self-build it so it's it's quite simple but um we still will we'll produce some assembly manuals yeah so yeah so amber was asking amber in new zealand was asking uh do they need to reach out at all if they just if they're their own manufacturer nope Nope. <laughs> no like like everything with with wiki house right is that we just publish stuff open source um and um you don't need to reach out at all right if you want to just it's all it's all yours go 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 and build it obviously let us know uh, yes. we'd love to know feedback so like everything right the, the value of having a shared pattern is that it, it it um it can keep learning right we can keep improving it so just the same as with the blocks when we encounter problems or issues or glitches with the blocks 
Um, we want to be able to update those and improve those, but the same with if there's anything about the buildability of the design or anything that we can improve on, um, you know, we want to know. And the same also with that example example um, bill of materials. We realize, of course, at the moment it's in GBP and, you know, that's obviously it's going to be different for, for different countries and, and different currencies. But um, it's always really, really useful, for you know, if you're willing to share um, at the end of it what yours was and what your costings were and what worked and what didn't work and it, it's a way for, for us to be continuously um updating the patterns so they just keep getting better for everybody yeah um a number in new zealand's asking um is it going to be live um shortly <laughs> the page yeah <laughs> yeah i will something. i will literally uh, pretty much as soon i'll I, even if i have to do a hacky workaround i'm not quite <laughs> sure why the link has decided not to work when we publish it but uh, even That's if right. you have to do a hacky work around, I'll get those working very shortly. Yeah, and, and we'll do a post in the community as well. We've got a WikiHouse a community forum uh, at WikiHouse. Um, sorry, at community.wikihouse.cc, and we'll, we'll post links there as well. Um, I just have one final question for you, Amber. So uh, we talked a little bit about the Garden Studio, uh, and I completely, I'm so sorry, forgot to introduce what you do <laughs> in the team. So you want to just tell us what, what your role is and how you support people um, who want to build, not the Garden Studio, but perhaps something else using WikiHouse. Yeah, absolutely. So um, so I'm an architect and I'm WikiHouse Project's lead. So a lot of what I do is supporting people to create amazing schemes using WikiHouse. So I support both clients and professionals, design professionals as well, in getting to grips with the system. So uh, typically people who are looking to create something, don't know where to get started, will get in touch with me and I can either help you myself or put you in touch with somebody who I feel is appropriate um, and, and will have your best interests best interests at heart so um so that's essentially my role um internally in wikihouse we can do uh, early stage concept design we can do um, bespoke frame design as well for people who are looking to do something outside of what the standard library can offer um and uh, and so if you're ever uh, feeling curious and, and don't know where to start then then please do reach out to me that's great. Thank you. I think that's our, all our questions and we are within the hour. So, yeah, so just uh, to quickly say this page is going live in the next little while, later on today, for sure. Um, we're releasing the first three patterns, the switch house, the micro house and the garden studio. And the garden studio is going to have a bill of materials and cutting files so you can um, do it yourself. Um, or if you want to reach out, Amber will be very happy to help you with your project. Is there anything else I forgot? That's everything well, from me. That's it. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we'll see you next month. We usually have an event at the end of the month. So we'll see you in May. Bye-bye. Cheers, Bye, everyone. everyone. Cheers, Mel. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.